Okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. I have to do a voiceover because you can't really hear me in this video. So I decided to go ahead and just add this in. So I'm going over washing hair today. Um, again, sorry for the delay. I did have to start recording this and watch the video at the same time. Now I know we're not doing this in a stand-up position, which is what we do in the shower. However, I'm still gonna make my best attempt at this. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse your hair. I don't know how you guys wash your hair in the shower, but I do tend to tilt my head back anyway. So this kind of makes sense for me. If it doesn't for you, let me know and I can figure something else out. Maybe I'll just stand her up in the sink next time. So I'm getting her fully saturated, making sure all of that hair is super, 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 super wet because that is key to everything. You wanna rinse really well to get anything you can off with water that is possible. Just give it a good rinse, run your fingers through it a little bit. I tend to brush my hair before I go in the shower to avoid any tangles or things like that. If you have super sensitive hair, then please refrain from doing that because you could really rip up the hair once you're in there and I wouldn't want that. So I do have a lot of mishaps in this video, whoopsie, but I don't like to edit too much out of my videos and cut and paste because I think that's weird. I'm very real with it. So you're gonna see me drop her God knows how many times and what her face and do all sorts of funny things. You know, my arm will get in the way a few times too because like I said, this just, I had the time, I made the videos, I've been under the weather because of my rheumatoid arthritis and fibro and so I am just now getting to my editing and posting. But here we go. So still saturating. I am gonna do two shampoos on her and I will explain to you why. So with doing two shampoos, the first one is to cleanse the hair of all of the debris and dirt and things like that that get in our hair, the pollutants. Um, if you use product, any product that's built up. And my second shampoo is actually going to be the one where it cleanses the hair, but it's, you know, it has more of the moisturizing properties to it in the shampoo. The shampoo itself is for the scalp. And so that's what I'm really focusing on, but I wanna make sure that I keep my, my scalp nice and healthy. And so in order to do that, two shampoos is ideal for me. Now, I personally shampoo once a week, and in shampooing once a week, I need two shampoos, but I do not use a shampoo that is ultra cleansing, I would say. I use our aloe therapy with the Afore line. It's still very cleansing, but it's not as astringent as let's say our Urgent Repair, which is wonderful and it's great. And I've used it on other people's hair with really, really good results. I just personally have the blue hair, so it's not feasible for me. So in the video, you'll see, I started on the top and then I go in, my fingers spread apart a lot and I really like to get the nape area, the top, but I start in the front. And then I go from the middle to the sides and then go down and then from the sides to the middle and then do the back. And I just keep repeating this process. I have a habit of splitting my hair in down the middle and going in and just making sure that that crown and nape area is really, really, really clean because sometimes that area gets a little disregarded. Um, not all the time, but sometimes. And if you have a lot of hair, sometimes it's just a lot of work to scrub through all of that. So I'll do a light rinse. This was the first shampoo. And the reason I say light is because I'm not trying to take every little thing out. I just want to get enough of it off that when I go in for the second shampoo, I really see that lather. Your first shampoo should not lather as much because it's getting rid of all the dirt and grime. Your second shampoo will lather more, which is ideal. You do want to emulsify that shampoo in your hands to get it spread across the scalp um, and the roots more than if you just tried to plop it on there and then tried to move it around. This helps you to not have to put as much um, damage, like heat, not heat. Water does make the hair weaker, so it's helping you to not break that hair in any way. So here I go, I'm gonna kind of show you guys how I do the back. I'm gonna readjust my camera here in a second. I'm telling you this was not my best, but I'm focusing on that crown and underneath the crown and into the nape. So really, you see how my fingers are spread apart, right? Giving myself almost a wide tooth comb effect, really getting in there, really getting on the sides. She is not the best candidate for a shampoo really doing it. Now, the sad part is, is I give these shampoos at work all the time and I have my guests in my bowl and it's so relaxing and I can see how they're just, you know, feeling good and I'm scrubbing really well, yet I can't do it to Deborah on this video. 
Um, and I can't mimic it myself in the shower. So if you're ever like, I wish I could get that kind of shampoo all the time, trust me, so do stylists. We want the same thing. We want to feel that too. Now here at the end with my second shampoo, I gently run the shampoo down my ends. That'll just take up any other buildup that might be there, but I do not scrub my ends vigorously. I do not want to take any excess oils out of there. I do not want to have issues with um, my hair drying out. Granted, I am going to condition, but over shampooing actual hair strands from the mids to the ends can really dry out those ends. And it's something you want to avoid. It can also cause a lot of frizziness later. So let's just keep away from shampooing the ends. Shampoo goes on the scalp, conditioner goes mid to ends. So I'm giving her a thorough rinse here. And then from there, I got frustrated. So I just took her off the stand because let me tell you, it started to become a lot. I don't know what it is about mannequin stands, but they can never really hold a head on there. I used to put a towel um, on the stand and then put the mannequin on there and like shove it on there, like just really get it stuck and then I'd get annoyed later. So making sure the hair is clean. This is something I like to do. I like to not feel any shampoo or any grit that might've been left from shampoo. So I go in and I do what I call the squeaky clean test. And I like to hear that little squeak when I'm rubbing my hair there. Not too hard, cause I don't want to hurt anything but just enough to make it work. So I'm gonna put her back on, and here in a second, you're gonna see me get conditioner. So I get two different ones. I use the owl therapy one, and then I use one other one, just to drop it. This is just a mannequin, so it's not like I have to really go intense on the conditioner, but I do play with it a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is use my red from my Color Revive Euphora, and it's amazing. It actually will make my hands pink. You will see it here in a second. Euphoria actually has color revive for blondes, brunettes, coppers, and reds. So if you ha are in any of those families, you can make some like really good decisions in buying this. I didn't know how to phrase this um, because it can help just keep that copper really intense or just keep it vivid. And then the brunettes, it just gives you great shine. The blonde, it is purple, so it will help to neutralize any warmth that you do have in the hair. If you do like a little warmth, you lose a little less. If you don't like any warmth, you lose a little more. Um, and then with the reds, you can see where I actually have my daughter use this. She has pink on the bottom. And so I have her use this uh, in between our coloring so that she can keep her pink nice and vivid. It is somewhat like a direct dye, it's just not as intense. So the color does come off my hands. It just takes some time. I went home that day. I did dishes and then I cooked and then I did dishes after I cooked. So by the time I went to bed that night, my hands were a normal, you know, color again, not to worry. I do tell people if they are going to use it in the shower, you can use gloves if you so choose, or you can just risk it all and wash your hands again, like 20 times after you'll be fine. 20 is an exaggeration. So I am taking this wide tooth comb to show you guys how I added it to the, to the ends first, brought it up to the mids. I am combing through to make sure that the conditioner is doing its job and conditioning the hair. I do not recommend a wet brush in the shower. I do recommend a wide tooth comb in the shower. Um, not a fine tooth, but a wide tooth. And the reason I use this pink is so you can see exactly where I put that conditioner. That just kind of helps and it shows you more or less where things should be. So I added that into the mix. And now I'm just letting it sit in when I shower, since it's one of the last things I do is my hair, I let my conditioner sit for about two or three minutes. Now, if I'm doing a mask, I do let it sit longer. And that's when I do little things like shave my legs or um, as I like to say, get my downtime and sit in the hot water by myself. I do not rinse my hair with hot water, but I will change temperatures from here to there. I do apologize if you hear a lot of ruckus in the back. I am at home doing this recording. So here I am ready to rinse. What I will say too is when you're rinsing conditioner, your hair should still feel very soft after. I noticed that some people 
their hair looks dry when they get out of the shower. Like it just looks like it hasn't been conditioned at all. And that's from over rinsing. So you don't want to under rinse and you don't want to over rinse. There is a right amount. Sometimes it's trial and error, but for the most part, what I tell people is if you can still run your fingers through your hair after rinsing, then you're at the right spot. But when you run your fingers through your hair, you should not feel the residue of the conditioner. So it shouldn't feel slimy, but it should feel soft and it should feel supple and hydrated. And that is what you're going for. After rinsing her, I am going to use a microfiber towel. I highly recommend microfiber towels for whatever you need them for, but preferably for your hair. I know they're great for cars too, because I use them to dry mine off. But microfiber towels are just a lot more gentle. To the touch itself, it's actually really soft. So what I do at home is I take my Euphoria microfiber towel and I do do a head wrap, but I learned a new technique in head wrapping that I actually saw and I thought was really interesting. I pat down my hair like you see here. I do not vigorously scrub at it to try to get water out. I simply pat because microfiber towels are actually super absorbent. So they do take a good chunk of that water out for me. I do like to wring out my hair before I use a towel because I have so much of it, but just remember to be gentle with your hair, whatever you're doing when it's wet, because it is extremely fragile when it's wet. So now I'm gonna kind of show you guys where that little trick comes into play. If you do decide to walk around with the, your hair wrapped up in a towel, I know what we used to do is just tip it over, but if you fold it, and I am actually gonna wrap her hair, so if you fold it this way at home, it takes some practice. It took me a lot of practice to get this down on myself because I would still tip my head over, but you'll put it underneath your head with it folded. Try to keep those folds the best you can. Pull it around the hairline as tight as you can. And then I learned to, I actually didn't do it in the video, but I take the one corner and wrap it into the inside. And then I take this other part and wrap that into the inside as well. So when all of that is sitting on that inside part, nothing is pulling away at the hairline, which is your ultimate goal. Because a lot of times people come and they're like, I don't know why I have these baby hairs. Well, we get them because we're a little too aggressive. And I'm guilty of it myself. I actually lose a lot of hair. So that's where some of my baby hairs come from. But when I used to just wrap my hair in a towel, I didn't realize how tight it was around my hairline and so it was pulling some of those hairs out and then I would get the new ones and be frustrated because my hair sticks straight and it would just stick up for days. So as I'm going through now, I'm still using a wide tooth comb. Granted, at this point, if you did want to use a wet brush, I'm not against it, uh, but I'm going through and I'll show you guys here in a second where the conditioner, you can see the tint a little bit there, but where the conditioner actually sat on the hair, for about two or three minutes, just so you know more or less where to actually put your conditioner. Now, this is something I like to show to kids too. Granted, my kids are pretty lucky, I'm pretty thorough, and I made sure that they learned how to wash their hair correctly on their own, and I can inspect it and know exactly what they are and aren't doing. But this is something that you could show them too so that they kind of get a gist of it. You can see that the hair, if I move it, it moves. It's not stuck together. It's not clumped together on the top where you would use your shampoo. But from the mids down, like I just showed you, there is that conditioner and you can see the tint where that conditioner was sitting. So I think I'm gonna take her off. Yeah, there we go. You can see the pink where the blonde is and the hair at the bottom is a little bit more red but mids and ends is where conditioner goes. That's where it needs to live, and that's it's made for that. Six inches off your head, you're not getting the nutrients from your oils, so it's always best to just remember that. You don't wanna add too much at the scalp, because if you do, you'll end up with oily hair less than a day after you washed it. So again, you can see where that conditioner is sitting. And I love what these conditioners can do. I've actually mixed the purple and the red together. So at this part, I am talking to you guys and telling you all the little tidbits I basically told you during this whole session. Um, sadly, I didn't, maybe I did have my AirPods, but I don't know why they just didn't pick up as well as they normally do. Maybe I need new ones, who knows? It's Valentine's Day today, so maybe I'll get some. Um, but microfiber towels, two shampoos, if you're only shampooing like every three or four days or once a week, 
and making sure that you're not over conditioning the hair because it's not good. And be gentle with your hair when it's wet, please, because it is very fragile. So again, showing you all those little things. I appreciate your guys' support and thank you so much. I do apologize for not being consistent. I just ask your forgiveness because I have been going through some flare-ups with my RA and it's not the easiest thing. This weather in Texas is going to be the end of me. But thank you guys so much. Again, if you have any requests or you have questions or you need help with anything, I am always here for you. Be, feel free to reach out through comments, through messages, emails, whatever it might be. Love you guys. Y'all have a great one. Thank you so much.